Water White, Book One, Chapter Twelve. With the Big Dipper twinkling, with the Big Dipper twinkling brightly behind them, Celeste, Chimney, and Orville approached the outskirts of the little town, which was not much larger than the neighborhood she remembered from her childhood. Halt! Who goes there? A loud voice from a distant tree startled Celeste. Don't mind him, Chimney whispered to Celeste. Just me, Nick, and no funny business, okay? I found lots of snoodles tonight, and someone from a newsed out village. Her name's... Hey, what's your name? He scrunched his face at Celeste. Paloma, she told the boy, and then addressed the tree more loudly. Paloma Elizabeth Newman, and this is my hunter frog, Orville. She figured she might as well introduce him as such right from the start. A quick glance at Orville told her he didn't appreciate his new title. Celeste watched as the teenager wound his way effortlessly from the top of the tree through the branches and down to the ground. The moment he landed, a strange sensation washed over her, and she braced to keep from falling. What was that? she said to no one in particular. Everything around her stopped, and even the air felt empty. Her ears rang in the sudden silence. When she noticed both Orville and Chimney were motionless, she focused her attention on Nick. Unbelievable, the new boy walked toward her slowly. In the darkness, Celeste noticed the sandy blonde curls he pushed from his face. He was about a head taller than she was, and she guessed his age to be about 16. He approached her with a casual confidence, closing the distance between them. What's going on here? Celeste asked with a hint of anger in her voice, which masked her fear. What did you do to them? They'll be fine. I'll let them go in a minute. So tell me, who are you and why are you here? I told you I'm Paloma and Chimney told you why we're here. Our village was oozed out. Where are the others, then? He looked to the hill beyond her. Everyone else went to closer villages, but Orville and I wanted to get as far away as possible. Now let them go. Hold your horses, pipsqueak. He sounded amused, and Celeste could feel her cheeks growing red. What was the name of your village? Her heart beat faster. She squashed the first twinge of panic. Her friends appeared to be frozen in place, and a cute boy was asking questions for which she hadn't yet made up the answers. Unlike with Chimney, she worried she wouldn't be able to distract Nick. Swampside, she threw out. Never heard of it. He didn't miss a beat. So you're telling me you know everything about every village on this side? She said too quickly. Maybe I do. He paused, and Celeste could see a hint of uncertainty in his expression. What do you mean, this side? So he didn't know about the other side. She decided to call his bluff. This side of Artesia. She hoped he'd take the bait. Nick looked confused for a moment, and Celeste was back in control. What's left of our island is pretty big, you know, or maybe you don't. She could tell he was thinking about how to respond. Well, I know about most of the other places, so why'd you pick here? Like I said, we were oozed out, and it seemed like the other side of the island is disappearing faster. There aren't any hills like you have here. Orville can fly a bit, and... She needed to come up with a believable story to explain how she knew his village would be the place to go. She turned to the two statues. And, and would you please release them from whatever you did? What did you do to them? Fine, he said, and with a wave of his hand, Chimney and Orville were reanimated. Hey, I told you no funny business, Chimney sounded irritated. Orville croaked and hopped between Nick and Celeste, his eyes set on the boy who was inexplicably too close to the girl he needed to protect. Nick retreated one step. It was necessary he told Chimney, who twitched and dug his toe into the ground. We don't know her. But she's different, Chimney, Chimney gazed at Celeste. She could see me. 
Nick took a long time to respond. It's okay, buddy. You just might be right. He returned his attention to Celeste. Be honest. His tone was less aggressive. Did you change after the shaking? Change what? Celeste wanted to ensure she understood what he was asking. You know, change. Like you were different somehow. Like maybe you could do things you couldn't before. Celeste discovered she was not the only human with special powers and relaxed for a moment. Perhaps her goal was simply to find others like herself. Perhaps that was why the cats told her to go south to find her home. She smiled at the thought, but didn't want to expose too much. I guess I did, a little. Maybe that's why I trust Orville so much. I feel like I can tell what he's thinking sometimes. I know it sounds stupid, he's just a frog, but I followed him here. Orville snapped a black bat from the air and turned toward Celeste to swallow it. I'm guessing from what you just did, she looked back to Nick after glaring at Orville, you changed too. She shot Orville a glance that said, play along with me, please. Celeste could tell from Nick's focused expression that he was thinking about his response. She could sense his dilemma. Trust me, please, she thought. And as she thought the words, she could see a change come over Nick's face. I don't know why, but I feel like I can trust you. Nick shook his head. You can. We're just looking for a new home. At least a place to stay for a day or two. Take her to the house, Nick told Chimney. Stay on the porch till they come back from ritual. Tell Blanche I said it's okay. We'll talk tomorrow. He looked closely at Celeste once more before turning and running back to the tree. He climbed to the top as effortlessly as he had descended. Celeste was breathless for a moment, startled by the intense clarity of the Viridian eyes that had just questioned hers. Come on, said Chimney, readjusting the bundle over his shoulder and heading toward the houses. If Nick says it's okay, Blanche won't be so mean. Celeste and Orville followed the boy down the street until they came to a house at the far end, its porch overlooking the pond. Celeste could see the figures returning to the village. She closed her eyes, head upturned, and inhaled the cool night air. She opened her eyes to see the Big Dipper twinkling more brightly in the darkening sky. Please help us, Daddy she whispered. That ends chapter 12 of book one.